if you are an Arsenal fan, maybe not so brilliant, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Slide Rule Football Channel, the Slide Rule Premier League show, and we're going to be covering week one. The Premier League is back, bro. Yeah, bro. And with fans. Fans, you know what I mean? So the people that don't know AC, we're talk fans, not fans. Yeah, more singing, more liveliness, more vibes, more energy for the players yeah, and everybody else. It's just a more exciting experience. Top prof- and it's a more exciting experience for people like us who can't afford to go to games at this time. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, the TV is shaking because of you guys who are in the stadium watching. But overall, great experience. Uh, a magnificent weekend of football being back out, fans in the stadium and just like, we- we've been missing this, man. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the intensity of the games, or A1, top class performances, both teams, mainly the home teams, feeding off the energy of the fans in the stadium. So, with it being the Slide Row Football Channel and the Slide Row Premier League show, obviously we'll start off with the Slide Row Pass of the Week. Yeah, bro. It can only be right. So, this week's Slide Row Pass of the Week goes to none other than Mr. Paul Pogba. So, brilliant performance this week, man. So, I'm, I'm hearing we have a, we have a clip. Oh, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we have the clip, man. You, you, you wanted the commentary? Oh, definitely, bro. All right. We'll, it's up. A second, yeah. Yes, we're going to go over to Mr. Wright himself for some commentary on this beautiful piece of artistry from Paul Pogba. Yeah, bro. Let's, let's run the clip. Oh, yes. Brilliant from Paul Labiel Pogba. The past just takes out about four or five Leeds players, takes every blade of grass with it. Beautiful. Through to Mason Greenwood. And you know when he's in front of goal, it's never a doubt. Brilliant from Paul Pogba. KDB, come outside. Over to you, Theo. Right. Good bit of commentary there, Akeem. And oh, it was a brilliant pass again. But in addition to that, we had some really good goals. We had 34 goals scored yeah. over the 10 games. And, you know, we're going to go to the pick of the bunch. What some absolutely magnificent, magnificent. stuff. Magnificent. Um, two in that game in particular. One from Bruno. The Luke Allen equalizer. Yep. Early second half. Chalaba's goal versus Crystal Palace. The Corey. The Corey versus Southampton. That one was beautiful. And then also the John McGinn late goal. Yeah. Uh, for um, Aston Villa versus Watford. But yep. Assisted by... Leon Bailey. No, no, than our, you know, Jamaican our boy there, you know what I mean? Big up Leon Bailey. Man, anytime. But yeah, out of those five, you know, we picked out, which one would you say is your favorite, man? Favorite? Um, so this one, we, we got a clip for this one, or you just um, want the, the, the recap? Yeah, we, we hear no clip for this one. Okay, no <laughs> clip? All right, I'll give you the recap, though. My goal of the week goes to none other than Bruno Fernandes, the occasion, bringing up his first Premier League hat-trick with an astonishing volley absolutely lashed into the roof of the net brilliant ball by Lindelof and the man the main man the marksman the talisman gets the old trapper crowd up and running in a 5-1 route of Leeds United back to you Theo thank you now for my pick of the five I from the same game I'm gonna go with the Luke Aylin goal and that was an absolutely brilliant strike and um no clip for this one either. But if you want to do the commentary uh, again. The Luke Ailing goal. Something special. Leeds thought they were back in it. And at that point, you can't blame them. Ball comes out. Ailing runs into the space. Might add, poor bit of closing down from Paul Labiel Pogba. Luke Shaw needed to do better. Luke Ailing looks up. Says, why not? Absolutely lashes it into the top corner. You could have three De Gea's, three Henderson's, three Allison's, three Ika Casillas, three Gigi Buffon's. No one was stopping that. Back to you, Theo. Thanks again. Brilliant commentary. Almost as brilliant as the goal itself, my guy. But we're going to move into some headlines from the weekend. Yeah, you know, some clippings. Look and see. First, we have, of course, Arsenal doing only what Arsenal could do. What a show. Put on a show. Put on an absolute brilliant show for us. Um, if you are an Arsenal fan, maybe not so brilliant, but I mean, <laughs> we 
were looking for looking forward to this one when it was announced the season opener. Relegation versus mid table side. And while I won't say which of those teams would use relegation versus mid table, what I will say is, and you'll probably agree, the best team won. Or the better of the two teams won. Oh yeah. Arsenal on full display. Brentford, first ever Premier League game. Opening the Premier League season. The world was watching. And Arsenal did only what Arsenal could do. <laughs> Shout out to Arsenal. It's going to be a long season. Very but, but yeah. Next Excellent. up. Player of the week. Goes to Paul Labille Pogba. Not, not just for getting four assists. But one of those assists went to Fred. Fred, if you assist Fred, you should be player of the week automatically. Player yeah. of the week goes to Paul Labille Pogba. Go well done, Paul. Paul. And well done, Paul. Shout out Pogba again. Never left his living room. This man was chilling and Second gear. picked up four assists on the day. So, you know, Pogba showing you know yeah. the absolute class that he has. Only the on sixth play. man in Premier League history to get four assists in a game. Either six or seven. That's special. I was hoping for him to get the fifth, but, you know, yeah. all And he did now. it in 60, 70 minutes. So, yeah, shout yeah. out Pogba. Yeah, so next up, last season, top four, out the gates, firing aside from City. Yeah. I'm looking at it. All the big teams, one, including Leicester this week, all the big teams aside from um, City. Winning, and Arsenal. And, you know, getting out the gates early. Arsenal. Yeah, bro. History, my guy. We said all the big teams, bro. Yeah, wing the ball. Oh, but no, Arteta the manager. Oh, sorry, 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 bro. Sorry, continue, right. continue. So yeah, all the big teams won this week, and um, aside from City, a plastic picking up a, a three win against Norwich will be Liverpool, Chelsea comprehensive win over Crystal Palace. Yeah, three 0 You know, game we just talked about United absolutely smashing Leeds, and then you know today, Spurs you know, up a nice win one 0 over City. So good job. For the top teams or top four looking like it's already, you know, yeah. going one, to be one thing. One thing from these fixtures is clear is that the bigger teams are going to dominate. The gap between the bigger teams and the rest of the league this season, I expect it to be pretty big. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. And okay. then final headline of this week, Nuno gives an update on Harry Kane. Yep. Now, we have the quote... From Nuno's pre-match press conference today. Um, yep, Hurricane, Hurricane didn't play in the Spurs uh, Man City game. And to be honest, both teams could have used Hurricane, even though Spurs won. Yeah, so Nuno's uh, comments when asked about the Hurricane situation and why he wasn't playing were um, he just continues to continue his preparation with the delay and all these things. You know, Harry just needs to work. And goes on to say that, you know, pretty much he needs to continue work to the point where he can contribute and help the team. Now, as much as we respect Nuno, are we taking that as facts or just cap? Give me a second, bro. I get the answer for you. Cap. <laughs> cap from Nuno. Big cap from Nuno, actually. And we respect Nuno. Nuno is yeah. an intelligent football manager, yeah, eloquent right. speaker. You know, rate, rate Nuno to the max. But that, my friend, might be the biggest cap of the season so far. And the season didn't even start, <laughs> start good properly yet. yet. But yeah. Looks like um, Mr. Keane yep. himself had yep. something to drink before this one. Cause yep. Michael Keane, his namesake, Roy Keane, would not have been proud about this one. Just delaying on the ball, bro. Had about four or five options. Pass the ball out. It's not preseason anymore, bro. You know no, what I mean? Simple. This might be one where we have to call the infamous Kabi. You know what I mean? Yeah. Gotta, gotta get Kabi in on this. Kabi to instruct him there. like, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, not sure what he was doing. They ended up giving up a goal. Thankfully, in from their perspective, Orton did win the game in the end. But that was just... Terrible. All right, moving on real quick before we get into the discussion portion of the show. Um, checking on the promoted teams as we did throw all of last season. This year we have three new teams. Uh, maybe not so new, but two Norwich. Two old friends. Yeah. Yeah, Norwich, Watford, and Brentford. And, you know, we'll check with Watford first because uh, pretty 
good win for um, Watford, I would say. Scoreline fluttered. Uh, Aston Villa beat. Yeah, 3-0 up and made it more difficult on themselves towards the end and conceded two goals. But good start from Watford. Yep. Good goals in Brentford, that game. Brentford, as we Brentford. talked about earlier. Brentford, what a game. What, what a performance. from Very you professional. Said. You would think Brentford were the, the more well-known team, the more seasoned Premier League team in this yeah. game. And if they can contain that level of performance throughout, they'll have a great chance of staying yeah. in the Premiership. If you watch any of our videos, Premier League-based videos so far, you'll know I rate Brentford and will be supporting them throughout the season. So it'll be interesting. I'm really happy for them to be in the Premier League in the first place, but to start off with the win. New manager, new team, new league, new stadium, and you know a, a good performance of back up. So shout out Brentford and hopefully you know they have a really good season. Ja, 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 ja. Yeah, the team that we think is probably gonna finish last anyway are already trending in that direction. Norwich. Three nil as Sk- last. Skill it brings it, bro. Yeah, it wasn't it's not the matchup Norwich would have wanted to start the season. Oh, Still, yeah, that was I a mean, terrible draw, man. Yeah. Liverpool renewing the lease on Norwich's goal and running it up as usual. Smoking uh, on that Norwich pack from early, bro. I was like, with Norwich, there's not much new right here. I mean, they're not new to the league. They come out every couple of years. You know? it, Norwich doing what they do. You know what I mean? Losing to Liverpool badly. It's, it's just Norwich things. And yeah, but ho- said, ho- hopefully, you know. In the case of Norwich, things can turn around. And hopefully in the case of Brentford and Watford, they can continue that level of performance throughout the season. Oh well, yeah, bro. Now to the talking, our discussion. Because we have two points we really want to touch on this week. Um, yeah, man. Go like, and... Watching the Liverpool game, as we were speaking about, the main destroyer of Norwich was Mo Salah, taking over the reins from the infamous Luis Suarez, who... Used to yep. have a living off Salah, off Norwich. And I don't believe this, but just to put the discussion out there. Is Salah in contention for the greatest ever Premier League player? Stats in, wise? In contention, yes. He's definitely not yeah. there yet, though. Give him a couple more seasons. I think if he retires, finishes his career in the Premier League with Liverpool. Yeah. Most definitely. He's already given him two more years and will probably be talking top about him more Liverpool player, yeah. much less. So I think if he keeps up this level of consistency as far as goal scoring, goal involvements, and, and winning continues to break all the records that he's, you know, started breaking already. Yeah. From the moment he joined Liverpool, he's been breaking records. Because um, think about it, bro. May like him or not, but the numbers show. 159 appearances, if I'm correct. 98 Premier League goals, which I expect him to bring up the 100 next week. 33 assists, I believe. I'll have to fact check that. Yeah. Over 100 goals for Liverpool already. And has been a two-time Golden Boot winner. And all the seasons he has and, played so far, good. he has been in the top three for Golden Boot yeah. for all of those seasons. So he could have Last easily year. had four Golden Boots. You know yeah, what I mean? Could easily have. Easily have had four goals. Yeah. First season almost broke the record for goals in goal scored in that season. In that yeah. season as well, as well. So Salah has been the model of consistency and has put the team on his back. Yeah. One of the best assists this weekend, by the way, just laying off, cushioning that Trent cross into Jota's path for the first goal. Yeah, that's a brilliant, that's a brilliant fantasy Premier League assist. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah, as far as the conversation, whether he's best player or contention to, for best player in the Premier League, he's a ways off right now. Yep. But if he continues this uh, run of form, I think he will get there. Yeah, and FYI, I think he's already Liverpool's greatest ever player. That's that. That's just me. Well, yeah. Next talking point: a player who did get his contract, but so far hasn't worked out post contract. Um, and that is Pierre Emerick Aubameyang of the Arsenal. What do you call um, this one? The, the Ozil syndrome? Something yeah, bro. Like Ozil syndrome. This one. Ar- Ar- Arsenal fans are experiencing, you know, PTSD from the Ozil thing right now. And yeah, Aubameyang was missing from the opening game due to illness, and a lot of fans have been putting Cold illness word, in illness. quotations. And last season wasn't a great season for him. S- so, the rumors are out there. Should Arsenal sell Aubameyang? Should? That's, that's a tough one, man. Because 
obviously we know the previous couple of seasons, Aubameyang basically by himself kept Arsenal, you know, afloat. Yeah, really you know, without yeah. they almost got they were in the relegation or close last season and you know years before Aubameyang would be the one to get in the one goal or whatever yeah. that gets them a win or secure they, themselves. They were at least stuff. Champions League hopeful yeah. and deserved, Europa League hopeful. A deserved yeah. contract at the time when he got it. But you never know, that, that, that decline might have started before, but it certainly doesn't look good that yeah. it's coincided and climaxed With the since contract. Are the point where he got the new contract. And being the captain of the club, it definitely doesn't look good. And, you know, you're at the point where, especially throughout last season, points where your team needs you. And he certainly wasn't the man last year. Yeah, and then last season, as much as the performance is on the pitch were bad, rumors about, you know, punctuality off the pitch and, you know, effort and is he doing it? No. Remember, this guy was benched in the North London Derby, the biggest game for Arsenal fans, because he showed up late to the ground. Yeah, so well, things like that don't bode well for him. I think the problem is I don't think they're going to be able to sell him because of the high wages. So yeah, smaller teams certainly won't pick it. Yeah. pick up those wages, and a big team will be looking at it and saying, "Well, what are you going to be bringing to us at this point?" Yeah, and you've mentioned his age before, maybe not since the video started but earlier. Yeah. He's thirty-one. Uh, and that's something that's going to be taken Factor. into account. So, But it, it's not a good look for Abba. And it, it's a player yeah. that we, we rate. Yeah. And you know, he's been good for Arsenal, especially. But right now, it's not looking too good. But we him. will say, though, if he is ill, or was ill, him and Lacazette, then, you know, the conversation about, you know, the, the Ozil syndrome, you know, kind of needs to be dusted a bit. Because if somebody is ill, they're ill. You know what I mean? And... That's no criticism of him if he is actually ill. But it just seemed a bit funny. And I can see why Arsenal fans are concerned. But yeah. so with yeah. that, cool oh guys, that's the that's the week one show. I mean, again, excited oh, yeah. to have Premier League back and have the fans back. Of course, the, the games just have so much um, more atmosphere to it and it's more enjoyable. But you know, let us know what you guys' thoughts are on first week, of course, you know. Comment your favorite goal of the week. Favorite you passes. Agree with our slide rule pass of the week. And with the questions we pose um, just now as well at the end of the show, Salah, in contention for greatest Premier League player ever, Aubameyang, should he or should he be not sold. be sold by Arsenal? So, once again, oh, this wait. has been... Wait, no, wait, bro. So, there's going to be a part in the show where we insert the table, right? You know, certain... Red team from Manchester, top of the league, right? Right. We can we can show the table. Oh, okay. End, Whatever. Yeah. end the league now. Twenty one is coming. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, guys, this has been slide rule. the slide rule Premier League show week one. See you guys next week. Slide rule out.